what is that one thing? What is the like one iconic detail about painting a rose like this that you can't do it without knowing or understanding or believing this one? I hate painting roses and I hate even more that I admit that I'm annoyed that I can't paint the rose. You know the one, the recipe rose that everyone seems to know how to paint except for me. Now don't get mad because I said recipe rose. I just mean that kind of classic, loose, modern watercolor rose that you paint it and every time you paint it, it looks good. Not my wonky roses that uh, maybe 30% of the time I'm happy with. You feel me? It plagues me. It haunts my dreams. I mean, it's a little melodramatic, but it's not too far from the truth. I gotta be honest, as an artist and a watercolorist too, yeah, I need to figure this out. So today I'm welcoming Emma Fave. You know, the YouTube sensation, talent in overdrive watercolor artist that we all know and love. And she has agreed to teach me, finally, once and for all, how to paint this darn rose. Hello, Emma. I'm so excited that you are here with me too. <laughs> this has been a long time coming for us. I feel like we have planned this for so long. And it's just, you know, life. Yeah, well, yeah, life. It yeah. Has, it's so overdue. And when I was thinking about, like, what we were going to do together, I just felt, I kept thinking roses, 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 for whatever reason. And, you know, I don't know why I care so much to be able to paint like you know what I'm talking about yeah yeah the rose rose yeah the modern loose watercolor rose mm -hmm. uh I don't know why I care so much because I've painted a plenty of rose that I'm moderately happy with and but then I started thinking like why am I beating myself up because I care mm -hmm. like just find someone to teach you how to paint a rose Christy Rice and so that's what I'm doing I'm going to show you how I typically approach rows so you can see what's wrong with me. There's, first of all, I'm going to say there's nothing wrong <laughs> with your roses. I can tell you that right now. And this is one of the most talked about flowers that people are like, I just can't get it. And I think it's because we put too much pressure on them all looking the same, but they don't need to. So I'm going to see what you do. And then I will walk you through how I was taught and kind of things I like and then I don't like and we'll go from there. Okay. So I am using, just so everyone knows, I'm using Legion Stonehenge today, which performs beautifully when you're painting like kind of one powerful layer, you know, wet and wet, it loves. So I thought that'd be a good choice. So what I would normally do, I would typically use a round brush of, of okay. some sort. Um, and then I would typically go wet on dry and I start in the center and kind of do something like this. And like, I feel like I, I start well, and then I get into like these bigger loop-de-doos, like C-curve things. And then I typically get into another color and maybe that's where things get too wild and crazy, but that's just like where my soul lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll do things like this. And then I try to get cute typically and do some kind of like, you know, forward kind of cabbagey rose facing type situation. And it's at this point typically where I'm like, bah, it doesn't look like the rose, you know? And I, and I always, I feel like I have that feel like it's getting lopsided and weird. And then I'm like, okay, I need a leaf. I need a leaf. I'll feel better if I have a leaf and then I add a leaf and I don't typically feel that much better. And this is where I, I usually get panicked and get, you know, self-loathing. So, okay. yeah. So, first of all, does it look like the rose that you're talking about? No. But does it look like a rose? It sure does. It does. And there's so much greatness in that rose that I don't want you to lose that. But I kind of have a formula of what I teach for roses to kind of make it just as simple as possible for beginners. But I also encourage people to kind of go off the grid and just try the things, add more petals. Like I like to think of it in like groups of three, but I don't always follow that. So I'll kind of show you where I go with this. 
Um, I, I typically don't do two colors, but I kind of like that you did two colors. Okay, so I like to use my round brush as well. I'm using a size 12. I tend to use a pretty hefty size 12, like it's just nice and big. Um, and then I load up my paintbrush with lots of pigment. So it's nice and dark towards the center. So right now I'm just using some sort of pinkish red. I don't even know what color this is in my palette. Um, and then I like to start off with like little squiggles. So you had the right idea for sure, but I tend to do more tiny little C curves like this. Mm -hmm. tiny, so it's like really tightly wound. And then I'll go into three petals which aren't that big to begin. So you're going to do three C curves. So light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And then I'm going to do two more. Light pressure, heavy pressure, light pressure. And you can kind of see it's going to start forming like this triangle almost. I where you have yeah, this little triangle in the center. And the petals are always touching another petal. I think where a lot of people tend to go not wrong, but kind of off is when they leave too much white space in between. <gasps> okay. And it goes I'm like this. A moment. I'm having an aha moment. Okay. You know what I mean? It has to touch another petal. Otherwise, it's just floating there. And it just doesn't look right. And another thing I see people doing is these big arches. Not that you were doing that at all, but these kind of big no, I arches. Was. Yeah. But you want to think more of like a flat, kind of like rounded mountain, like this kind of... You know what I mean? It's more of a C curve, but it's not a big archway. It's flattened a little bit more. Yes, so yes, that, yes. As I start to go around a bit more, let's darken these up just a bit more. I start to take some of the pigment off of my brush. So I'll just kind of swish it in my water a little bit, okay. take a little bit off. So it starts to get lighter as I go out. And then I'll do three more. So I'll do one over where two are kind of overlapping here. So I'll do one. See, it's touching. I'm touching. Two. Yes. Three. So there's still a decent amount of paint on your brush right now. Yeah. But it's going to get gradually lighter. And it's going to pull from the paint that's in the center. Okay, so then I'm going to just rinse my brush off just slightly again. Just taking mm -hmm. a little bit more off. And this should still be wet. And you're just going to do a few more. And every time you kind of touch one of those other petals, yeah. it's going to have some of that color kind of bleeding into there so here i'm doing only three but obviously that doesn't kind of frame it that nicely so this is where i'll start to add some more kind of um you know just shorter fatter little petals here that are not so typical you can kind of just like frame it yeah. make it this kind of like fluffy yeah right fluffy and there's no real formula of how many just kind of what it looks like and then sometimes i like to go back into the center if it's still wet and just add a little bit more color Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it just bleed a little bit more into some of those areas. And that's kind of it. Okay. And it feel, it's, it's kind of like finding the appropriate amount, amount of white space. Right? Because you want yeah. these little bits, but you don't want too much. And you don't want too little where it just kind of looks like this, you know, blob of a rose where there's no white space. And you yeah. can't have any definition in between the petals, right? Yeah. Well, it's finding that sweet spot and it just takes practice. Mm. And I find a rose is just, it's so hard to do and no rose is going to look the same. Um, every time I do it, it's like, oh, that's a good one or oh, that's not a great one. But you just kind of go with it. And then for the leaf, I find just because the leaves on roses are a bit shorter mm -hmm. and like a little bit stubbier, I'll just go in between where two petals meet and I'll just do, I love it when it's still wet. So you get that little bleed. Yeah tiny little stem and then just a simple kind of leaf that way and then another stem that way and one kind of aha moment I had when I'm teaching this is getting that little tiny bit of stem showing with a little bit of white space is gonna make a huge difference I just had that aha moment I right like I was like biting my lip, trying to keep my mouth shut to not talk over you. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, you do a little stem, a little tiny, but you need that white space. Because if you don't have that white space and say it goes like this. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but it's just, it's, it, there's not enough white space. And then the other issue that people do is where they have too much stem. So they'll do this long stem and then they have all this white space here and it just looks separated. 
So it's just finding that sweet spot with your white space, which takes practice. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Because like, I, and I also do this thing where I completely just don't even do a rose leaf. I do whatever ridiculousness comes to my mind. At which the- you totally can do too. I mean, true. True. Yes. There are no rules. So huge aha moment for me. Number one was the, the you know, too much white space. All the petals should be touching somewhere. Mm-hmm. It, it, am I hearing you right? Is that yes. what? Yeah. Um, and then the other huge aha moment was the little little stem, you know? Uh, and so I'm really excited to uh, paint this side by side with you. So I'm going to go ahead and get some new paper going here. And then I, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling my breakthrough moment. Now, I just want to say, though, that your rose does not look bad or is not not a rose. Like, I do like the white space within yours as well. And I think that's another kind of way to paint a loose flower which you know I find so many people are like if it doesn't look exactly like yours it's wrong and I I am so of the mindset that that's not even true because that has so much beauty to it as well and there are moments of this in every rose I paint there are you know I've taught myself to be kind to myself and Mm -hmm. point out things that I love I think for me it's just like my little mini Everest I just want to have that under my belt and I giving my per- myself permission to kind of almost break my own rule of that, like, just be happy with, you know, yeah, like rush to paper. Like, okay, I'm turning the, I'm turning it back on myself, you know? So this is like, just like my little Everest. That's All right. So I'm going to get my number 12. Mm-hmm. That was me clapping. When I get excited, I literally clap <laughs> for no one. I love it. Maybe it's for myself. I don't know. For sure. All right. So tell me what to do. Okay, so let's start with our little kind of circular squiggly line. So you're just going to do these tiny little C strokes and they can all be touching another C stroke somewhere. We can even do more. We can make it, you know, a little bit bigger in here. Just the tip of your brush, really light pressure. And you said they should be touching? Yep. You don't really want to see one singled out by itself. It should be touching something else somewhere. So kind of doing this little spirally like that maybe even go a little bit bigger bigger and kind of right in the center close it up just a little bit there's a there you go yep and then just make it a little bit bigger i'd say okay yep we're i'm can you hear my voice like i'm very nervous don't be nervous (laughs) i don't know why this is ridiculous what's wrong with me that's good that's good okay Then you're going to do your three petals. So they're not going to be super big. They're going to be kind of like a little, just slightly bigger than this. So you're going to go, and they have to be touching the center somewhere. You don't want it to be floating above these little lines. You kind of want that center of this petal. So I'm going to push down, and it's going to touch some of those lines. And then I'm going to lift up like that. So see how it touches there there in the middle? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you're going to do another one. Again, that center, kind of touching those lines a little bit. Yep. Okay. And one last one, center of it, touching those lines. I'm going to be a rebel because I always have to be. I have to change up my color a little bit. <laughs> so I'm just going to add more color. I can't control myself. <laughs> I'm just going to add a little bit more darker color to that just to make it a little bit more intense towards mm-hmm. the center. Okay. Then I'm just going to rinse off my brush just a little bit. Rinse. And then we're going to do three more. The center of the petal is going to be overlapping where those two or where two petals meet. Yes. Like I tell people like brick, lay your petal brick. Exactly. Okay. So, and even the edge of this might be touching just slightly and I go over. You want the littlest bit of white space. Okay. Okay. Two. So it's in threes. And I think I screwed something up. No, that's good. And then one more. Yep. Right there. That's good. See if you can get the center of that one to touch those petals that are right underneath it, underneath it to grab some of that color. This one? Yeah, right there. Just to see if you can drag it out just so it bleeds into it a bit. Yeah, like that. And then we're gonna do our final petals, kind of touching, like not, not the last three, but just kind of wherever you think it will make it look kind of fluffy. So I'm gonna take my brush and just wash it off a bit. I think I'll add a little bit of yellow. Okay. 
and still make it kind of lighter. We'll do the three initial ones overlapping where two meet and then just kind of fluff it out All right. as needed. One. And these ones should be a bit shorter and fatter. Oh, shorter and fatter. Shoot. Okay. Yes. I changed my color a little too. My dirty brush. My wet brush. Now, the only thing with this is that I find if your petals, if you're going too slow and they dry, you're not going to get as many of those amazing color bleeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of have to go fast, but I, I don't want to, like, you know, pressure anyone to go super fast where they're like, I can't do this. Uh, go at your own pace, <laughs> but you might get some more layers rather than color bleeds. Now my fluffing? Uh, yeah, now fluff. I love that. Okay. Like, I don't know. Like, I've watched tutorials of others do this, and it's never been broken down to me this way. And I'm so, I feel like I want to cry a little bit. I love it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> For sure, so. I kind of dig it. So see the the petal that's right on top of yours. That's kind of a bit more arched at the top of your flower. Yeah, right this there. It's not really. It's only touching one other petal at the yeah. end. See if you can have it touching somewhere else, just so there's not too too much white space. You know, or you don't want to see like it floating. That's kind of like my rule of thumb. It does yeah. obviously doesn't have to be like that. But that's where I would go back in my own paintings and be like, oh, okay. not touching there. You know what I mean? And then I'd go back pink or something and just kind of. Now, do you ever like lift some color where I don't only because I, to me, the highlights of the rose are usually what those white spaces are trying to represent in a way. I'm going to stop. Okay. Now I'm excited about the leaf. Okay. <laughs> Talk to me. Okay, so find where there's a space where there's two petals that have kind of been there, right? Grab your green or whatever color you want to use. Mm -hmm. And then do this small stem. Just curve. Like small. Can you quantify it? Oh, yeah. Like just a little, a little boob. Maybe even <laughs> a bit bigger, a little bit longer. Because what I tend to do is even though I make it like this big, yeah. I will go back. Yeah. To kind of gauge how much, like, I won't put my leaf at the end here. Right. I'm going to go back and see how much white space I want to put. Okay. And then I grab my leaf and I kind of try and have it going a little bit more towards the side than rather like straight out. Yep. Perfect. Like what you're doing. Yep. And then I might even do another one. So another little stem kind of getting that white space in there so there's white space on either side uh-huh uh -huh. and then our leaf so you have that oh, tiny little space on that one too yep like that and then just go back and the leaves can touch if you want yeah i like to go back into with some darker green and just kind of tap the base of the leaf maybe even go around the side and then if I even wanted to, sometimes I'll even do like a third leaf kind of coming out straight out the top. But again, making sure there's white space on either side. Mm. You just don't want the leaves to look all like blobbed together. You know, you want that little bit of separation. Right, right. You got it. Yep. Got to have the separation. And that's kind of, I like how yours are jagged. So you're going to do more jagged. I'm trying to do jagged. I'm trying to be like, you know, rose. It's a rose, man. Not my big swoopy fresh dragon lip. Ooh, I like your purple that you're adding in there. It's like, well, you know, gotta be extra. Yeah, I like that. See, then I take from you. You take from me. Right. Ooh, I like that. That adds something even better. A little something, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel so empowered right now. That looks so good. I can't even tell you. I love it. And like now I want to go in and like, you know, I do a lot of that like line work stuff yeah. and the leaves and stuff like once it's dry. So I'm so excited now that I have this, this, this foundation, right? So I hope there were a couple aha moments that just kind oh of click. I feel so much lighter about yeah. this rose situation. And I definitely had a few aha moments. Number one, the whole like every petal should be touching you know and there shouldn't be like floating petals i do floating i mean look at this i always did floating petals 
which sometimes work. But I, it does work though. And I love that too. And there's some pieces where I will do that as well. Yeah. But when it comes to like the basics of this specific rose, these are kind of like my foundations of like my, my little rules that I follow. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask Emma, I, I know this is going to be a tough question and this was not a question I gave you ahead of time. So if you don't know, now, you know, I love putting people on the spot. <laughs> What is that one thing? What is the like one iconic detail about painting a rose like this, mm -hmm. this, that you can't do it without knowing or understanding or believing this one? Okay. So I think the most important thing is white space. The use of white space either makes or breaks it. You have too much, the petals are floating, it looks disconnected. You have too little, then it's a blob right trying to find that sweet spot of how much white space is something that will make or break this type of rose but at the same time it's something to learn and i don't discourage people from me like if if it doesn't work out the first time this is something you have to practice like anything with watercolor you have to do too much white space at some points you have to do too little so you can see where you went wrong you know what i mean Exactly. So just kind of figuring it out. And it only happens with, you know, trial by error. You got to figure it out. Love it. The white space, I dead on. Huge. Like that's not something I thought a lot about in, in, until it was plaguing me at some point in every rose I've done. Yeah. But ever able to like crystallize that in my brain and my own understanding. So there's you. Here, hold on. I have to show you one thing. One second. Okay. Okay, this is a perfect example. Uh, this is from 2016 when I first started painting with like the kid palettes, like the chalky kid palettes. And I hadn't taken a class. <laughs> this is so bad. But look, these are, oh, hold on, focus, are my flowers. But if you look at the white space in between those leaves, they look too structured, too disconnected, too, you know what I mean? There's no flow to them. Yeah. And then when you get over here, it's like too blobby. Like I hadn't taken a class. I hadn't learned anything yet. This is just my beginner work from, and I love that you're sharing it. Yeah. Like we all start somewhere. And when I see beginners, they're like, this is mine. I'm like, yeah, mine looked exactly like that. Yeah. You know? So like, that's, I kind of look at this and I go, yeah, yeah. That's the white space. And you got to just kind of play around and figure it out. Out. Oh. I tell my son, this is another aha moment in, in any art journey, it happens. And sometimes it happens and you don't even know it's happened. But I tell my son, he struggles with reading. I tell him, honey, just because you're frustrated doesn't mean you're not good at this. Mm -hmm. Just because you're frustrated doesn't mean you're not good at this. And you're going to look back pretty sooner than you think. Yep. And you're going to see your progress right yeah. in front of your face i promise you yep you just gotta keep going yeah you gotta you gotta fail i don't like saying fail but you gotta fail and mess up and then try again to get it better because if you don't make those mistakes you won't learn from the mistakes this has been so cool friends and you know what so is this